need to explain the soul accessories and what they do, but I don't like half-baked measures. So instead, I'm going to explain and rank every accessory and how useful they are. For lack of a better way to sort them, I'll just do them in alphabetical order. Arm guards are either the bottom of S tier or the top of A tier. They have two effects. You take 10% less physical damage and you don't lose arms. Arm cuts are the most common limb loss in the entire game. There's not a single enemy in the entire game that only cuts legs. A handful, like Lizardman and Cave Mother, cut both, but most enemies only cut arms, and even those that cut both usually are weighted towards arm cuts. Combined with the damage reduction these provide, there's actually a couple of fights where they're a better choice than the Salmon Snake Soul. The Black Witch Soul makes your attacks poison what they hit. While this is incredible to have, it's not always going to be the best choice. Unlike Purple Vials, you can miss, and Sylviana resists poisoning from the soul, but not from Purple Vials. However, unlike Purple Vials or Throwing Darts, this never runs out. It just costs you an accessory slot instead. I'd put this in B tier. It's always worth having, but there's a lot of situations where you can get better results from something else, and the situations where you can use it can usually be done better with a different tool. The Butterfly Soul is not glitched. It's one of the last accessories you can get in the entire game, but it's not very useful despite that. It adds 50% evasion, which means half of physical attacks will miss you. This sounds awesome on paper, but it's not that great in practice. Most enemy attacks bypass evasion. When you're facing enemies that don't bypass evasion, you can stack this with defense stance to get 100% evasion and completely ignore every attack thrown at you. It's a great counter to stuff like Romaler's Peck, but not so good against his Maul, because his Maul ignores evasion. Because there's a limited number of situations where it's useful, but it does excel in those situations, I'd put it at C tier. The Cave Mother Soul adds 10% attack. That's it. There's a very limited number of situations where that matters. Best case scenario for it is mimicking Ragenvolder's exclusive katana strats, but those tend to be few and far between anyway and usually aren't good strategies. It beats an empty accessory slot, but is never the best choice for virtually any situation, so it gets put into D tier. The Cave Wolf Paw adds 20 luck. What does luck do? Basically nothing. This is almost the same as an empty accessory slot. F tier. The value of the Yig Charm depends on whether or not you have a purified Eastern Sword. It boosts your weapon's crit rate by a flat 20%, which means the Purified Eastern Sword goes from 74% to 94%. It boosts the functional attack set of the sword from 189 to 243, which is huge. For the rest of the weapons, it winds up tripling the damage 24% of the time, which winds up with a roughly 75% DPR boost. It's a little too swingy to be reliable and too random to plan around, but if the only metric you use is average DPR, it's the second best damage accessory in the game. Easy A tier. It's not always the best choice, but it's always strong and can often be the best choice. The Chromaler Soul adds 30% to your attack stat. This translates to roughly a flat 30% damage boost. While it has less effect than the Yig Charm, there's no randomness to it, which opens up much more reliable routes to win. It's outperformed on average by the Charm, but it's better than the Charm where your goal is to hit specific damage thresholds in a single hit like Hard Mode Crow Mauler's Torso. It's always better to have it than not, and it does a few things nothing else does, so it just barely makes it into A tier. The Eastern Perfume is glitched and does nothing. It's identical to an empty slot. F tier. The Eclipse Talisman lets you recruit Enki and Nasrab and reduces magic damage by 10%. Enki's kind of a crap party member, but Nasrab's pretty good due to being literally immortal. 
Outside of those uses, it's just a worse Soul Devour necklace. It's better than not having it, but it only works for a few fights, and even then it's a bad choice. Setting recruits aside, it's D tier. It's occasionally better than an empty slot. Eyeglasses raise your accuracy by 80%. This does not mean you're more likely to hit heads. The way the game works is that it first rolls for accuracy to see if you hit. The default accuracy for weapons is 100%, so you always land your attack. The game then checks enemy evasion to see if it dodged the attack. Eyeglasses do not affect enemy evasion. So there's only two situations where eyeglasses actually make you more likely to hit. When blinded, your accuracy drops by 75%. If you give eyeglasses to a blinded party member, they'll hit just fine. It'll be like they still have their eyes. The other situation is when you're using bone shears. Bone shears have minus 50% accuracy, so eyeglasses give them normal accuracy. If you curse your bone shears, they have the second highest attack stat in the entire game. Because skeletons can equip bone shears and crits multiply their low attack stat, this combo is slightly better than a skeleton with a purified eastern sword and the yig charm. In other words, there's only two pretty rare situations where eyeglasses are actually good, but they're close to the best choice in those situations, so they wind up in C tier. The Everwatching Talisman prevents the Phobia status. The Phobia status makes you take 50% more physical damage and reduces your evasion by 50%. That's it. All those people that talk about losing mind or accuracy are wrong. Even with Phobia, if you have an extra attack from White Angel, you can guard on your main turn and attack on your extra turn to take only 75% damage. There is no situation where this is a worthwhile accessory except when you don't have anything better to equip. There's only a handful of fights where it'll have an effect, and the effect is a weak one even then, so it's D tier. It's better than equipping nothing, but it's never going to be your first choice. The Iron Shakespeare Soul reduces physical damage by 30%. This is pretty strong. It's rarely the single best choice, but it's always really good to have and helps out in almost every single fight. It's a solid B tier. Leg guards reduce physical damage by 10% and prevent leg loss. The list of enemies that cut legs is very small, and anything that cuts legs can also cut arms. So the leg guards are basically just a worse version of the Iron Shakespeare Soul. The best effect this has is the damage reduction, which is always nice to have, but other things do it better, which is why this is either the bottom of B tier or the top of C tier. Monocle is a worse eyeglasses. It adds 20% instead of 80%. This means that the two things eyeglasses are good for, negating bone shears and blindness, won't be fully negated. Bone shears jump to 70% accuracy, and blinded characters jump to 45% accuracy. Most of the time it has no effect, and in the two situations it has an effect, it's not strong enough to be useful. So it's near the bottom of D tier. Thorn Ring Cures Poison, makes you immune to poison, and permanently locks your accessory slots. The only accessory that helps with poison, but poison is pretty rare? Usually not too hard to cure, and not terribly dangerous. The permanent loss of an accessory slot makes this probably worse than having nothing equipped. F tier. If it didn't seal your accessory slot, it would jump to C tier because nothing else cures poison for free. Ring of the Still Blood cures and makes you immune to bleeding and both types of infection. Bleeding and infection are both incredibly common, and infection is one of the few status effects that can actually kill you. The cost of permanently losing an accessory slot is incredibly high, but it's not worse than not having an accessory slot at all. D tier. If it didn't seal your accessory slot, it would jump to B tier since it would become an infinite use green herb and cloth rag. The Ring of Wraith steals you for 8 hit points at the end of turn. If you pick a fight with a door and lose, you can keep refighting it to heal fully. 
You can also swap it between characters to heal them, too. It's low regen in a fight, and full heals for the full party when you have a save fight? So while it's rarely worth bringing into a real fight, it's still incredibly useful to have. A tier. The Pinecone Pig brings you items. Like the Ring of Wraiths, you can farm safe fights to use it forever. If you're patient enough with it, you can get infinite food, infinite healing, infinite money, infinite mind, infinite herbs, and the scroll that teaches you dash. It takes ages to get them though, so I personally hate it because I hate grinding in video games. It replicates the effects of several accessories and provides several effects you can't get from anything else, but it's a terrible choice for an actual fight. It's S tier, just don't forget to take it off when things get serious because it's F tier during real fights. The peculiar doll doesn't do anything. If you choose to give it to the girl when you first find it, it'll make a boss fight easier, but the accessory itself doesn't do anything. It has no effects. It's the same as an empty slot. F tier. To be perfectly honest, I've never used the old guardian soul. Not once. So this ranking is pure theory craft with no experience backing it up. While it's equipped, if you die in a fight, you get to the next turn with one hit point instead. In other words, it lets you survive one extra round. I genuinely can't think of a use for that. While it's comforting to know that if you screw up, it won't be the end, it uses up an accessory slot that could be used for something that makes sure you don't screw up. It's Strictly better than having nothing equipped, but it's worse than almost every other accessory. D tier. The Salmon Snake Soul is my personal pick for the single best accessory in the entire game. There's a huge number of fights that are impossible to solo reliably without it. It also cures infection and bleeding outside of combat, and in combat it also prevents limb loss and on fire and critical states. There's no way to get multiples of it, and if you have it and you don't have it equipped on someone, you're probably making a big mistake. Remember what I said about the Ring of Wraith? This is the Ring of Wraith for mind, but 10% regen instead of 8. This means you can toss out Black Orb every second turn without losing mind. Because there's ways to spend mind and to gain an advantage, this is better than the Ring of Wraiths because it's worth bringing into a fight. But it's still only 8 tier. The Soul Devour Necklace reduces incoming magic damage by 30%. This is really good, but only important for like two fights, and does nothing the rest of the time. Most of the time it's the same as an empty slot, but has a decent effect the rest of the time, so it's C tier. The Spirit Anchor is only available if the main character is Anki and only on hard mode. Aside from its use in the ending, the only thing it does is prevent the soul binding attack. Soul binding sets your mind to 50 if you have more than 50 mind. So, only if you're playing as Anki, and only on hard mode, and fighting a bumbler, and have over 50 mind, will this have any impact on your game whatsoever. It is the lowest possible D tier because it has only one effect that isn't gonna happen. It's not gonna crop up. The White Angel Soul is the other possible pick for the single best accessory in the entire game. It gives you a plus 10 agility, which gives you two actions each round. If you guard on your main turn and only attack on your extra turn, it can mimic the limb protection of the Salmon Snake and cuts all incoming damage by half. It's also the strongest damage boosting accessory since two actions flat double your damage output. It also lets you do things like recovering after casting expensive spells or taking a big hit. If you have one and you don't have it equipped, you're almost guaranteed to be playing the game wrong. S tier. 